<laughs> well, welcome to this Halloween-themed uh, episode of Real to Real. Today I have Broadshow with me. Hola. And Wilson's here. Hi, I'm here too. Hello. <laughs> and today we're going to be watching. Here. We're going to be watching the Halloween Tree. Do you guys? Yeah, know never heard of it. Anything about this movie? Nope. nope. Same as Broadshow. Never heard of it. Neither have I. I have never seen then, this movie. And to keep I on keep on trend with you know our other Halloween movies that we watch, like the yeah. Ghost Boy, Little Ghost. The little Ghost Boy. We haven't seen that. that was last before. year, dude. We haven't seen that. Yep. So now we're gonna watch something else that's the, Halloween themed. That, that shitty one with the Christmas cricket or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Never saw that. <laughs> cricket on the hearth. Yeah. Oh my and god, I, think... I blocked that out of my memory. That was so bad. <laughs> oh. I know, right? Well, the girl but was what... blind, and then she decided she wanted to see again. She so wanted she to see, yeah. just because she got to marry the man, he healed her with his love. That's the perfect perfect description his, of his with character. With his marriage. Too. With his marriage. The man. The man. Yeah, the it. man made her see again. Dude, remember when he fucking cosplayed and and like hid from her? as like a fake old man yeah. cosplayed as an old man yeah, no was... I'm not the man you love and she called him out too at some point yeah <laughs> so, like, yeah. so familiar are you, are you him back no, from the I'm war he's like no, no that's not me you're crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how... but what made me think of that yeah. what made me think of that movie with this movie is you sent you told me the name of the movie and I was like I have no idea what that is okay. and you sent me you played me that like little snippet or something of the, yeah. the remember, beginning of the trailer. Do you remember who and then you were wrote like, the book? Who, who yes. The, okay. Yes. You, I didn't look at anything. It's based up. on a story by Ray Bradbury. And I was just like, Okay. Huh? What? Yeah. And it's same the here. same situation with that, that shitty cricket movie. Because that shitty cricket movie was based off of some, like, what was it, like Dickens book or something? The other Dickens Christmas story? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What, that's what happens yeah. in the background during a Christmas Carol. <laughs> yeah, because then that was written by Dickens. I was like, so is this going to be another like weird, dumb, shitty thing based off something by a famous writer? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's keep an open mind, and hopefully, it's not that I, bad. Yeah, it probably we might have another Cause... little ghost boy on our hands. <laughs> yeah, I'd like uh... I'd like you guys to maybe uh, guess. And I will too. I have no idea. I've never seen this. So what this should, movie is? Yeah, what this movie is about, just by the title, okay. I guess. And it's a you know cartoon. So late eighties, maybe nineties. Um, pardon my complete and total shit uh, short term memory, but what's the name of the movie? The Halloween, the Halloween tree. Tree. Yes. The Halloween tree. Okay. So my guess for the Halloween tree is it's this going to be this tree that gets really pretty around fall and it's got all of these fucking um plumpkins that grow around it and one year for there's something some incident's going to happen it'll be some curse or some shit and the tree is going to like wilt and look all shitty and all the plumpkins are going to die and it's not going to be good and then some shenanigans happen and they beat whatever thing cursed it, and everything goes back to being cool again. That's my guess. It's a good guess. Just based off that title. Yeah, I, I agree that there will be shenanigans. Yeah. It's only an hour long, so I think no matter what, it's going to be tight. I'm not expecting songs, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, true. If they are, they're probably just happening in the background beh like behind dialogue. Right. That's a good but, point. That's a good point. Music really likes there, to pad the movie out. Yeah. Do you think yeah. there'll be musical numbers? I don't think so. Because how, how long was Charlotte's Web? That had what? Like, at the max, three, four songs? Yeah. Nothing nothing That's, like the, the that Christmas movie. The goddamn cricket. No, that shit-ass cricket movie. <laughs> um, or even Rudolph Reno's Reindeer. They're, my, all, they're my... all over like those kind of movies, too. Mm -hmm. My guess is if there's musical numbers, there's one in the beginning, there's one in the middle, there's one at the end. That's it. Okay. 
That's my guess. If there hope. is, if there is musical numbers, but I agree with Wilson. I don't think there will be. I hope that there is secretly because I I want to know these whoever made this. I want to know their interpretation of spooky music. Oh yeah, right. And and, and hearing cheesy songs based off something by Ray Bradbury just makes me giggle. <laughs> Wilson, Some musician had to be inspired by. Do you have anything to add to the story, or do you have any other plot points? Maybe you want to throw in there that you think could happen. I don't. I don't think we're gonna really follow humans that much at all. I think it's mainly gonna be animal based, to be honest with you. Okay. Well, Interesting. Yeah. Tree in the title. It it makes me think like, who knows? It's it's a especially big or like nice tree, kind of like Bracho was saying. That's like not too far out in a forest and people go there every fall because the leaves changing are so nice and like every Halloween they throw a big party around it and it's the Halloween tree but we follow the animals that like live around there so I don't know it, I didn't even I didn't even think about the guess. animal yeah. angle That's an I didn't even think about guess. the animal angle with that yeah but you're I could totally see that happening being a big animal thing in there one question I have for both of you okay yeah what are we thinking for the spooky level here? Like, <laughs> what are we? What are, what are we gauging? Okay, so like the gauge for spooky for this, I'm gonna like for for like level one of spooky is like Scooby Doo, and like level ten is like Are You Afraid of the Dark? Okay. That's what I'm going. Okay. Because since this is a kids movie, yeah, that's my gauge of spooky for kids. Okay. And I'm going to say that this is probably going to be uh, like two max. Yeah. I'd, I'd say that that's probably true. I'm guessing it's going to be kind of like Nemo's Adventures in Slumberland. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Spooky. spooky adventures. I can see this being whimsical. Yeah, it might be whimsical. Like, you know, the, the, the threat in that was like a, a darkness that, you know, spreads. Yeah. I think that's kind of be it's gonna be similar in this movie too. Maybe it's Bracho. Like yeah. What's up? On the scale that you created, mm -hmm. where does a? I I, I want to throw some things at you and see if we can test this scale just for a second okay. here. Oh, good idea. Yep. So what? Where would like a Treyu, the horse from the Never Ending Story, dying I was in the swamp? Just song? thinking about that. That's where does that land on the scale? 10. That's that's ten. I thought it was at least, a, at least an 8.5. Okay. So there we go. Oh, are you say do you want are you want me to like I don't know. That is the, the signifier of that level or are you saying like I'm just, just asking you where you think scale. that fall I think yeah, rated on the scale. Yeah, so on on a scale like scary, I don't think it was that scary. I think it was just traumatizing. The you artax I mean? the artax scene? Yeah. I think it was, yeah, just, it was just artax. It was sad and traumatizing. Yeah, that was you know? sad. Okay. I don't think that, I don't think that was scary, right? So where does a dead and gray, like dying ET, laying in a little stream? Oh. Where, where, <laughs> six where, 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 where? Six point five. Okay. Okay. That's sad too. But there's there there are scarier things that ET does in that movie though. So you're picking out sad things. I'm picking out scary. I'm not picking out sad things. These are scary. I gotta know how scary these moments are on your scale. Right. But, I, I I feel you. I feel you. you know. Oh, okay, Bracho. You say something else that uh, is maybe a five on that scale. In a, scary. A five. Yeah. I'd say like. Uh, I think. Let me. The media of when you were a kid. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. <sighs> I was thinking initially goosebumps, but that's probably more of like a seven, right? Yeah, that's close to a, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Maybe. Yeah, goosebumps? Are, are You Afraid of the Dark was way scarier than Goosebumps to me. Do you remember the episode of Goosebumps where it was like uh, Night of the Mask? Where like yes. floating masks came after a, a girl and they were just like floating heads? That's yeah. traumatizing. The one where the person put on the mask and they couldn't take it off. That's the one, and then she takes it off and it like chases her down the street. Yes. Do you guys remember the, the music puppet video? Scared the shit out of me too. Do you guys remember the music video for the Aphex Twin song "Rubber Johnny"? Yes, that's an awesome. Yes, song. I love that. Where, where, when you were young and you didn't know how the internet worked, you were like, "How? 
I can't this comprehend real? this. Yeah. Who is this person? Right. How did? No. Like, so is like this, yeah, is this real? Where does that fall on your scale? Where does Rubber Johnny fall on your scale? That exceeds it. That's going into adult scale, dude. Okay. That's you the, can't. That's the forbidden. I don't think your. I don't think your scale holds up very well. Like you can't place things easily upon it. My scales for kids things. So like, if it, if if it tops out at a ten, it, the Apex Twins a ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, Apex, it's a, it's, it's Apex a, Twin will always be a 10 on a kid's yeah, scale. It's a forbidden video for kids, yeah. Yeah, dude. I remember I got scared as fuck when I was a little kid, and I saw the Schism video by Tool. That shit spooked me. I didn't like that one bit. A lot of claymation and weird shenanigans. Yeah, it's true. That's... Yeah, I, I think I got scared of Enter Sandman's so, music video when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Um, I was there's just a thinking... Lullaby. Uh, there's a lullaby interlude, you know? Like, yeah, the Willy Wonka tunnel scene. Where okay. does that lie on that scale for you guys? Uh, up there. I'd say six to I seven. I, for yeah. first time experiencing that, that's like a... Yeah, that's like a seven or an eight. Yeah. If you yep, if you look I at the agree. background, you see the centipedes and like chickens' heads getting cut off and stuff. You're like, yep. whoa, that's mm -hmm. uh, yep, it's pretty graphic stuff. Yeah, especially for a kid. And then you get Gene Wilder yelling at you, right? And that dude can yell. Nobody knows where they're going. <laughs> and he gets fucked a... louder and louder, and he's like, "Hey, the fires in hell keep burning as <laughs> the what? rowers keep yeah. on rowing." <laughs> Don't do this, Mr. Walker, please don't! It's supposed to be magical! No! Oh. Yeah. Everything was so whimsical a little bit ago, you yeah. know? What happened to that fat kid in the chocolate river? He drowned. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he got All sucked those up into kids the tube. died. All those kids are dead. Or horribly They're maimed. screwed up. They're maimed. <laughs> Where do you think Oompa Loompas come from? Oh, there's a Trespassers. history into the he, into the factory there are some tribesmen that he found and he brought back with them that's the real real story yeah i think that's the raw doll take on it yeah yeah there are some tribal people that willy wonka discovered what makes and, you think uh, that what makes you think that oompa loompa land has a tribal society that's what it said I think like that was the been, there might have been dialogue saying tribes but I might yeah. have been forgetting or remembering that might have been the, the or maybe flash. was that the shitty Johnny Depp yeah. movie that was happened? that the the backflash or the flashback of him <laughs> at the, him that might have been it too. trekking through the jungle and finding them. I hate that that movie polluted my memory of Willy Wonka. It was so pure with just Roald Dahl and uh fucking the first movie. Gene Wilder. Well, we should get off topic of those, and we should yeah. start watching the Halloween tree. What you guys say See, about that? Yeah, we started exploring that spooky scale, and then we went on a big digression. I guess we'll we'll have the, the spooky scale for you where this falls on that scale after we watch it. How about that? Woo! Yes. All right, we ready to dive in? Let's do it. All right, we'll be right back. And now, our feature presentation. Yeah. Give me some good names in these credits. Al Moore. There we go. <laughs> Dick Seabass. <laughs> <laughs> Emery Myrick. Woody Yoakum. Woody Yoakum. Ziegenhagen. Good child. George Goodchild. Good old Marcus Dickerson. Joe Big Nell. Bingelli? 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 Star Wars. Bodie Chandler. Bodie. Nice. Elmo. <laughs> Joel Valentine. Jill Valentine's shitty brother. 
Elmo Pons the Bannock, dude? Jesus. <laughs> Cuddington. Cuddington. 93. 93. Hanna -Barbera. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's definitely cheap ass Hanna Barbera. The way that guy looks, looks very Hanna Barbera. Mm hmm. That was a sly little look he had in that logo, yeah. too. Yeah, he's like, like you know I'll be back. <laughs> you know I'm going to find all those balls. Still not done teaching you about Halloween. Take, take some more drugs. Good for epic. <laughs> I got more skulls for you. Here we go. Give me one of the good Lenny Neems. Oh, there you go. That's I a like good the, one. I like the tree. Tree was pretty yeah, smaller. I like the tree. I like the tree. Go, go, go to the shot that's like up in the branches so you can see all the jack o' lanterns. Okay, that's a good one, but I also like the one Tyler was on too, though. I think that's what mm -hmm. you're talking about. There's one where it's looking up, though, too, isn't there? Yeah, there's like some where it's just like, but I mean, whatever you want. Oh, spooky. <laughs> Better not let your friend die. All you right, do guys. a full-blown tree, too. So, I'm fine uh, with full-blown tree. We just got done watching Halloween Tree. Or, Ooh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. That's the Halloween tree. That's the Halloween tree. So, the, it the wasn't economy. a pretty tree with pumpkins growing around it. It was a gnarly tree with yeah, pumpkins Rachel, growing you're pretty, in it. You're pretty close with that uh, assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's kind of a curse. So. Kind of, yeah. Like, I wasn't really expecting it to be uh, set as an educational movie. Was it <laughs> a curse? Well, I mean. I mean, he took. The I genuinely soul. don't know. He took the So, do you understand what happened with that kid? Because I'm not entirely sure. No, me either. I just know that he was. He was like... in limbo. He, he was under the knife, yeah. getting his appendix out, and his spirit was wandering around. Little Ghost Boy. And it's basically maybe, Little Ghost Boy Part 2. Maybe Mount Trout. <laughs> okay, we should preface this by Pip was the best kid in the universe. Pip best kid who what ever lived. Pipkin? Yeah, Pipkin. Yeah, Pipkin. Pipkin they literally so... say in the beginning of the movie that he's the best boy in the world, the greatest <laughs> yeah. boy who ever lived. Yep. And then... He was pretty milk toast, dude. Uh, yeah, fucking. But we had our, we have our crew, the generic crew. We got the, we got the, uh, every the man. boy version of the everyman hero. Mm -hmm. You've got the the geek. You've got the fat kid, and you've got the girl. And then all you're yep, missing was girl. the was the, the, the elusive plucky, Pip. Yep, who was our plucky redhead that we we're missing from the group. The greatest boy in the world. Greatest boy who ever lived. Greatest. And they're like, boy hey, ever we lived. we're going trick or treating. Where's Pip? Pip's never late for trick or treating. And at that point, we we're like, he dead in a ditch. And then they go to <laughs> what his if? house. We said, what if? Yeah, they go to the house. Like, oh, he dead in his house. And then all of a sudden, we see an ambulance and him getting put in there in a gurney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, good, shit. Call. good call. That was amazing. Rip Pip. Rip but. Pip. Yeah, there's a reason that's the saying that everybody knows. Yeah, turns out appendicitis. Uh, he left. He thoughtfully, as he was getting wheeled out on the gurney, decided. Like, Wait, nailed, hang this on my front porch. And he fucking nailed a note to his fucking door frame. <laughs> like, Sorry, bros, I can't no. go trick or treating. I got appendicitis. No, yeah. use the two inch nails. They're so better. they were like, "All right, we'll fuck off to the forest," and <laughs> and then they see little ghost boy pip <laughs> and they follow him till we get to the spooky house with where who? we where we miss where we meet uh what's his name montroud yeah. yeah clarence clavicle or something like that montroud? yeah clarence clavicle montroud voiced by leonard nimoy Which is and uh he did an awesome job and it was actually yeah. voice acting. Like, I made that comment where it's not just him using his normal voice. He's putting on, like, a, oh, hello, children, like, type voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, like, kooky. He's doing his, yeah. his kooky man voice, yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Um, and then, I, I don't know, there's some shit about the tree and souls and some pumpkin. And he takes the fucking top pumpkin and fucks off. Pip and they're like, no. Yeah. We well, he looked like him too. Back. So we were we were talking like yeah. 
it's well, like why is the ghost boy like hanging around this pumpkin and they were like oh because the monstroud uses the bodies of children to fertilize the tree etc and just talk yeah. about the weird stuff and Me then too. it looked the pumpkin looks like him and we're like uh what <laughs> yeah we even say like and then their souls go up and the pumpkins yeah, or whatever for, for every child the, the tree consumes it creates a pumpkin and that's why there's thousands of them we're the, the yeah the entire time we're like almost predicting the movie <laughs> like it's, yeah parts of it i like the uh, concept though i love the idea of that like how they yeah they make the jack-o'-lanterns mean something more like, and there was there was souls some, of kids in there that's kind of crazy there was there's some spooky bits in there, actually, like for like a kids' show. Yeah, really. Um, well, where well, does I it mean, fall on your scale? How about, how about we just say right off the bat, where does it fall on the scale that you've created at the beginning? It's a great. Question. It's definitely it's definitely above Scooby Doo, right? Uh, uh, a little bit. Yeah, dude. There, there's definitely more serious parts in there, and but, more like nobody's like, ever in danger. There's a lot of rotted corpses, and... <laughs> it's and, also uh, educational to me, it just doesn't... Yeah. And the, that fucking pumpkin, when it talked, was terrifying. That was legitimately scary. <laughs> I thought it was just releasing, like, music, like... <laughs> no, it was talking. It was full-on words, and it sucked. I never um, heard... It's it so said weird. something like, help me, or... What? Yeah. Run, guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> It wasn't cool, dude. So I, I, I'll say it. No chill. I'd say it's, I'd say it's <laughs> either like a a two or a two point five. Is where I'd put it. Yeah, that seems oh, accurate. accurate. I think I think that's completely fair. Yeah. It had moments it's like, that I could see kids being like, "Oh, that's kind of scary." Right. And uh, I will say we were, or I was, wrong. Where was saying like it was like, "Oh, look, we're gonna have." Some work by a writer that just gets obliterated by somebody. Turns out, it wasn't, uh, it, it actually had his involvement, and he narrated it. Yeah. Fucking Ray Bradbury. He was like, a narrator, yeah. He, he yeah. wrote? Or he, what else did the, the title say? Was it just narration? Based on work, based on a work by, um, uh, by Ray Bradbury. And then he was the narrator. Yeah, and then he narrated it. Was, he yeah. did a pretty good job. He did like a rhymey kind of uh, yep. chat. Yeah, it was just... for, that's why it was weird because the start of it was very Dr. Seuss, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it trans transitioned into something that wasn't a poem or a rhyme at all. It was really weird. Yeah, I don't even want to say that he was like super descriptive. It was just like his word choice was very uh, like esoteric. Yeah. It's it's trying to sound maybe like old English E. Right, ask, like like an old and, story kind of, and it was and it served like you know narr like obviously like narration in a book where it's telling you what's happening, and it was like it was all right for most of it. He had good voice for it, but I was just surprised. I was like, oh, it wasn't. Oh, you know, he was actually involved. Okay, yeah, all right. Because the movie started, and we, were, I at least I know, I said like, who the hell is this guy who sounds like? Yeah, he I know, me too. Three beers before starting recording because he's just like <laughs> and the children sleepy, they were going out and the wind. Sleepy old Ray Bradbury. <laughs> sleepy old Ray Bradbury. That's a perfect yeah. impression of him, wasn't it? Uh, the, the, the kids there, the town. Yeah, the kids yeah. there. Was there. <laughs> the whole time I was like, where's, what's wrong with him? So get him like some cotton candy, make sure. him happy. And that's the, they see this little ghost boy version. He's and, like uh, 12 whiskey sours in. Like, yeah, <laughs> but he's still he's still like a cheery drunk, pretty coherent. He's just like, yeah, these kids they like, climbed to the tree and they found the pumpkin with their friend's face on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to get a little Mister Plinkety there too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the the uh, so like the gist of the story ends up being like, or like the the framework I guess is like. Hey, you guys are dressed in costumes. Um, you, uh, you're dressed like a mummy. We're going to ancient Egypt, and they go to the past, and some trippy, weird time travel thing. And yeah. hey, see, this is where mummy is. And look at this kind of pre trick or treating. And then they go down the line of each of the costumes. You know, the hunchback, the witch, 
um, and then end on Spooky Skeleton, <laughs> and fucking who's what was his name Tom yeah. Tom Skeleton. Tom's his name was Tom Skelton. He's like, well, I might as well be a skeleton with a name like Tom Skelton. My name's Tom Skelton. Mm -hmm. I'm just your average boy. And he's like, um, boy, do you even know your heritage as a skeleton? Yeah. So they, they then go to like a graveyard and shit and then catacombs and then they just drop the heavy message of like, Mm, you're not afraid. You, know, you become not afraid of death by staring into the eye. I'm just like, yeah, like, why do you wear the skeleton? Oh, uh, because my name. He's like, no, boy, I think. It's like, well, I suppose it's name because we want to look death in the eye, and we can't be scared of it. Then if we like look at eyeball to eyeball, like, yeah, yes, we're just like, good. we're just like, what the fuck? Where's this message coming from? Why is he the one teaching it to them? Um, I don't know, he was this creepy guy with, uh, nose and chin that looks like dick and balls hiding in some spooky house. I feel like he does this to a batch of kids every Halloween, and just the God, people, like, so. who live around here just know about it. They're like, he's yeah. Just like, he's just like, who's gonna be the ghost boy this year? <laughs> who's dressing boy? up? I, I need to know what your children's costumes are so I can plan an appropriate curriculum. Yes, I must. I have to scope out these sites before. You think I just go there willy nilly? No, I, I gotta plan this slips? down to the second. Please sign Her your mask. permission slips. We're gonna trans time travel this year. Her mask is like pretty much exactly his face, except she doesn't have balls for a chin. <clears throat> right. But it's a jutting out chin like his. Yeah, it's, um. Yeah, there's the ET music I section. I feel like if uh, kids were going to be scared by anything in this movie, he would be one of the things they could easily be scared by because just his like design is so yeah. And we know. found out at the we found out at the end it was Hanna Barbera, yeah. which makes total sense because there is you know with the matte paintings and big spooky houses kind of Scooby Doo ish right with that aspect Scooby Doo monster game. Scooby Doo Monster Game, and then um, fucking the 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 design of fucking Montroud himself is very Hanna Barbera. -y. Nothing else is though. That's why it was like no. kind of shocking at the end when it was like Hanna Barbera. And we're like, what? And I'm like, that's why he looks familiar. He looks like early '90s Hanna Barbera shenanigan. Mm -hmm. He looks like he'd be the villain that they were thinking of before Snively Whiplash on, like, the Wacky Racers. Yeah. He kind of looks like uh, Gargamel a little bit from fucking little bit. Smurfs. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. He looks like he was he never got out of the testing phase at Hanna-Barbera, you know? Yeah. Somebody you know, drew like, him and he's been sitting on a desk for, like, 15 years. So what does his hair look like? He doesn't have any. Got a lot of eyebrows. How about his eyebrows? No. No <laughs> hair. <laughs> no. Just no. <laughs> no hair. Have him smooth as a baby's bottom. I don't know what you don't understand about no hair. <laughs> well, how should <laughs> he sound? None. He should sound like me. Yeah. <laughs> Make him sound like me, he but a little bit sound wackier. like me. <laughs> and I like one of the things I like. <laughs> One of the things I like about his design, too, is his cape, like, looks like it's, like, sewn into the seam underneath his lapel there. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Like, it looks like it's part of it. It's kind of cool. They did a good And then he, like, flies around. Cape. Do we ever get an explanation of who the fuck this guy is, other than his name? No, he just lives in a creepy old house that, uh... Because remember that... Why can that's he fly? The... And why can know. he do magic? Why, why did they can just he turn so into readily, bats? Why did the kids just so readily accept that this guy is just like, what happens on Halloween? Well, I mean, obviously nobody that smooth and hairless could be fucking dangerous. He's just got a butthole mouth. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, he's got um, a little pincher mouth, yeah. <laughs> the, I, I made this comment, like, partway through that, like, this feels like some somehow find meant for, like, a religious group. Right, but, right. But I don't know who. And it, right. had, it, it's it got a weird, like, aspect to it. Like, I, jokingly, like, why does it need to have a message at all? But I, 
because it like has an educational part to it. TV special too, right? Yeah. It makes me wonder though if maybe like at some point in the planning phases, this was just Leonard Nimoy playing Leonard Nimoy. He's like, "Hi kids, I'm Leonard Nimoy. Let me teach you about why Halloween is what it is." And like, almost everything. Remember my song about Bilbo Baggins? Pause (laughs) on this card when he zooms in. Time management. So he is. A time, a lord? Fucking time traveler, I guess. Yeah. He's a time lord. Carapace. Carapace clavicle bone shroud. Yeah. Those are words. Mound shroud sounds like a, somebody's like cutesy name for pubic hair. This is my mound shroud. <laughs> the carapace, like a part of a bug or some shit. The carapace, yeah. It sounds like yeah. it's, it's a skeleton something. Yeah, some shit. I forget what a carapace is, but yeah. Oh, fat boy did a bumble. Because <laughs> fat, cause fat, fat kid's gonna fat kid. Yep. It's unavoidable. He calls him big. He calls him big boy and shit too. <laughs> he's mean. Yeah. And he's like, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but fuck you for calling me out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then he's just like, shove more down your throat, fatty. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we eat our way out of this situation? Hmm. And then we've got the worst catchphrase that Fat Boy has. Yep. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! He said it. And like oh my god! Words of twenty times. Yeah, he just like kept saying it. I was like, why? Why? And then at one time the he did the phrase. fucking. Then he did the the fucking hat trick. Yep. The triple whammy. <laughs> just fucking Man. hit us in the face with a triple whammy. It was like fuck. How dare that little Fat Boy! Oh my god, my favorite part of this whole thing was Notre Dame. Um, yeah, that was weird. It, you know, we we were like, okay, they're teaching lessons about mummies. The they're teaching lessons cool. about, like, yeah, the witches and, like, Wicca and Salem yeah. Witch Trials. And then it gets, I'm like, so are they <laughs> just going to say, like, hunchbacks were deformed it's people? But they went to Notre Dame. Yeah. And no, look, it's a cathedral. Yeah, it's not finished yet. <laughs> Run around and build it. <laughs> yeah, that's where the musical number would have been. Yeah, right. Because it is. They're literally just running, and bricks are appearing underneath them, their feet, and building the building. So it's like, are they running? Are they like aware of the floor plan and are running where the bricks need to be, or do the bricks just know? Or like, what's going on? It's all fun happenstance. See Anne Hero him right there. <laughs> but we uh oh, his shadow, shadow looked like Batman his, his shadow looked like Batman really? <laughs> yeah go back Tyler um, I want to see Batman there was a moment where the little boy in the like hunchback the costume boy? falls oh. onto a gargoyle and uh <laughs> It like, comes to life and he flies around with it. Okay, watch. Yeah, it looks like Batman. Oh yeah, with his hands up there. When his hands went up, he went full <laughs> Batman. That was Anna Barbera. Yep. Um, Warner Bros. The, the little fat kid is just flying around on the gargoyle, and we're like, "Oh shit, it's Meatloaf." Yeah. Oh yeah. This that turned into. That's what it was. Here's, <laughs> here's, here's the lesson. This, this is uh the Meatloaf behind the music. <laughs> yeah, so when I was a little boy, my friend was on the brink of death, and we followed his ghost around, and uh, I was dressed as a hunchback, and we got to Notre Dame. They were going to leave me there to be the hunchback forever, but uh, something happened, and I had to jump on a gargoyle and uh, fly <laughs> off, and that's where I got the inspiration for Bad Out of Hell. Flew around like, oh, on a magical ride. Yeah. It just turned into a meatloaf origin story, which I was okay with. <laughs> the gargoyles were pretty metal. Yeah, and then they turn There is some metal stuff in this. Like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone till I'm a holy girl. Overall, I would say this movie, you know, hit me with the the mood of Halloween. Yep. Like it, it set that tone. Oh dude. It took me back to to the early nineties like cartoon shit like that, because like there was a lot of it that was like this. That was out there. And especially like Hanna Barbera stuff. They, because that was the other thing. Like the educational aspect made more sense when I find found out it was Hanna Barbera, because they do that in some of their shit. 
a lot. Like, here's a lesson to be learned. So. It still just feels to me like a movie that I would have, like, randomly found at my grandparents one year. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just, like, put in the VCR. Like, to oh, me, it feels like maybe a little Wilson that movie. Like this. <laughs> you're flipping around TV. TV and then, yeah. like, nothing's on. And then you hit this. And you're like, oh, there's a cartoon on. You see it, but you never see what the title is, and then you never <laughs> see the movie again. Again, you know what ever. I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, that's what this feels like. Oh <laughs> that, God, that frame. Oh, that pumpkin's had one too many. Yeah, dude. When I, dude, yeah. Why isn't the when nose that pumpkin hot? The nose is dark. That's weird. Yeah, dude. Well, that's where his skull. Different part of the anatomy. Yeah, sure. That's true, but what goes in the hole, you know? No. Don't Comes you out sully the Halloween tree with your hole. Dude, this, this movie sullied itself many times. <laughs> There's so many things that were just like, due to my like innuendo-prone mind, was just like, <laughs> This is where I think they did a good job on his cape. Yeah, dude. In shadows. Hell yeah. It looks really good. Hey, this is... It is the same studio. Well, not really. It's the same company that made Batman animated series. Warner well, Brothers. Maybe. I, I really do wonder if there were any... Uh, any, like, crossover on crew there. Like... Yeah. Because it seems really, really specific that he did the one action that would have made him look... His shadow look exactly like Batman exactly like when he Batman, held his hands yeah. up. And this he would be when... Because the animated series came out in 92. And this came oh. out in 93. Maybe, so. maybe like, one uh, or did two of the animators, like, worked on this and was like, fuck it. This is just, I'm I'm barely getting paid anything. I don't care. I'm sneaking yeah. this in. Because they, they, did, they did share, because, like, Bruce Tim, who did, who made the show, came from doing animation on Tiny Toon Adventures, you know, and, like, all that shit. And there's a lot of people who worked between all those shows like that so i could see that gotta make a paycheck yeah animating oh. the halloween tree his his face is very off-putting and creepy too the little ghost boy <laughs> yeah that weird like kind of like my eyes are kind of squinting but like i look kind of sad but also kind of spooky squinting but tarantino look at my creepy smile. yeah very much that's just the, this is the origin story of Quentin Tarantino. No, Squintin Tarantino. Squintin Tarantino. There you go. <laughs> and there he is. Is a pumpkin. I'm gonna shrivel like my balls. This little boy is now a pumpkin. Feast on him. Make pies. What do you? Go, Ooh! <laughs> yeah, right there. Dude. <laughs> right there. <laughs> he looks like uh, he looks like Arnold's grandpa from Hey Arnold. Yeah, look at his <laughs> droopy chin, dick. Right there. I know his droopy dick. And then chin. the head bump. Like, it's the same head bump that the Hey Arnold Grandpa has. Is. This, is my, this is my favorite state of matter that this man achieves yeah, in this whole yeah. movie, his, is this one frame his, right here. His fucking chin lost its erection. Mm -hmm. It's just fucking flaccid now. Hey, when you get to be his age, you know, you'll, you'll take whatever you can get with the chin. Oh, yeah, dude. Dude, it, if, when I get his age and I'm able to fucking squat a law like that, I'd be so fucking happy. <laughs> Do you think... Do you think somebody of, like, an advanced age has more leeway to be this kind of a person or, like, this kind of a figure on Halloween who just, like, can lure kids in from the street for something completely innocuous and is just like, let me educate you, kids? No, because it's always going to go to diddling. And so on. No. It is. Don't Parents won't let it happen. They fight <laughs> it out and they'll be like, fucking, that's not good. Don't be crass, Eric. Uh, I am crass, the crass or frass. I know, crass bandicoot. Crass bandicoot, then. A Crassassin's Creed. <laughs> but like that couldn't. That that's what I mean, though. Like that couldn't happen today, because too many parents would be like, "Nope, that guy's a fucking nope." Yeah, I'm. I'm really curious about the book now. If it is more of a. Yeah, fuck, I forgot this was based off of a... Well, I don't even think it's a book. I think this is just an idea that Ray Bradbury had about, like... Yeah, because it... Oh, an old man teaches young kids about Halloween. No, I think it, it, it is It did say based upon 
the work said based stuff. upon a work. a work. Yeah, a work. That doesn't mean a book. Yeah. So it could have been just some fucking story idea that he had or some outline that he just shipped over, you know? He had a deal with Hanna-Barbera that they were going to make an animated movie together and freaking like comes down to the week of when he's got to hand in his notes on the first draft of the story and he has nothing and he spends the entire night drinking just worried about what he's going to do wakes up the next morning and everything he's scrawled on a napkin is what turns into this so there's the greatest boy who ever lived <laughs> his name is Pipkin his name is Pipkin no this boy is too good we gotta take him out right away he's dead for we most of the it. it's a little ghost boy it is a novel it was a novel that was made in 1972 huh I wonder how that is I mean, probably not great, to be honest with you. I mean, well, that's, I don't what know, like... that's what I'm getting at. Like, do you think it's 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 interesting because it could? Who be wants too... to bite the bullet and read the novel? <laughs> I mean, I'm interested. I might see. Shit, if it's I'll on take Audible. a look. If it's on care. Audible or something, I might listen to it or something. Yeah. Because I want to know the differences here. I know. We need to come back. I'm... We need to come back after someone finishes it and discuss. I know. I want to know the approach with the movie side of it. If they approached it differently saying like you know what maybe we'll just take we'll borrow from just the framework yeah the framework of of his main story of the kids that are trying to chase down their dead friend's ghost but then we're gonna repurpose it into an educational tool we're gonna make it lighter hearted here's what I bet the differences are just off the top of my head I will read the book but just off the top of my head here's what I think the differences are the book is probably still about a group of kids and one of their friends gets appendicitis named Pipkin and yep. the book is just them like following his spirit around and like Ray Bradbury like sci-fi kind of like supernatural spooky-ishness happens and it happens to take place around Halloween and then the movie they just added the fucking pubis mond and <laughs> all the uh, learning about Halloween just because Dude, they could the, I'm looking at the wiki page right now the uh, the cover for the first edition looks tight as fuck. I'm seeing that. I see that too. Yeah, the first edition. Yeah, I read a little bit of the plot summary. It Mon seems, Shroud is definitely there. It's yeah, he's in there. A carapace Mon clavicle Mon Shroud, pubis Mon. Ooh, is he, is he a bad guy or a book from 1976? They just say he's a mysterious character that shows up. This is this is very away. different. And the fact that it's a group of eight boys set out to go trick or treating, only to discover that their ninth friend Pipkin was then whisked away on a journey that could determine whether he lives or dies. So that part's similar. But there's eight boys. It's not like five people plus four boys plus girl. Right. So Oh, they go to a lot of places, dude. Yeah, they go well they go Well there's more there's more boys, more costumes. True, they go ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and ancient Roman cultures, Celtic Druidism, Notre Dame, Notre Dame Cathedral, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame, and uh, Day of the <laughs> Dead, Mexico. They do still learn the origin of the holiday, um, fear of death of ghosts, played in shaping human civilization, only treats cells, whatever, whatever, serves as a metaphor for the historical confluence of this tradition that's cool if that was something that came out in the movie that the tree yeah we never got that part of no, it served so. it serves as a metaphor for the historical confluence of traditions to make up halloween that'd be really cool yeah something to tie it all together oh here's some uh here's a, some fun facts the novel originated in 1967 is the screenplay for an unproduced collaboration with animator Chuck Jones, who did a mm -hmm. lot of, like, you know, Hanna-Barbera, Looney Tunes, whatever type shit. Mm -hmm. He's like Bugs. He did a lot of Bugs, didn't he? Yeah. And uh, uh, Bradbury also. Of, he did Tex a lot Avery. of Bugs. Tex Avery. He did a lot of Bugs, I suppose. He's one of those dudes that had a show late at night on Cartoon Network. It was a compilation of a bunch of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like Tex Avery did, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Bradbury also wrote the 
the script for this movie, too. Well, good job, Ray Bradbury. I'm proud of you. You know what? I would actually like to see a reimagining of something uh, modernized of this, maybe. Either in a physical, like a uh, real life acting, live action stuff, or <laughs> maybe something similar to like a CG. Because I just love, I love the mood that it sets. I love. Yeah, it, it's it's got a good like tone for it. Well, here's like, here's what we everything, do. Everything, the music and everything in this is just top notch yeah. for spooky time. Here's what we do to like make it um like hip and new and like more appealing to a modern audience we get scarjo to play uh pubis mond <laughs> yep we could do that and she's, yeah, the, she can play she's everything. the she's the same name same character she's just played by scarjo and she's just the kooky lady on halloween who's like let me fucking teach you kids oh dude you should check out some of the artists are the guy who illustrated the book. Um, his name is Joseph Mugnani. Mugnani. It's spelled M-U-G-N-A-I-N-I. It's really cool. It's very. It's kind of Burton-y. I think I saw that. Like I could. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. Some what of the stuff saying, he has of uh, of of pubis bond is uh pretty cool <laughs> i i can't mound what was it yeah, um mound shroud mound shroud yeah mound shroud. M okay yeah m-o-u-n-d-s-h-r-o-u-d i just never care to remember honestly so you're looking at the one where the the kid is hunched over by the tree and the other kids is wearing a skeleton outfit Illustrated by what? Gris Grimley. Gris Grimley? What? Have you seen mm -hmm. that, that picture of the book? Christmas Grimley. Mm -mm. There's a um, Google Books. There's a illustration by Gris Grimley of the Halloween tree. Ooh. It looks pretty dope. I like it. I think I think I uh, I think I like the style of this Munyani guy. Yeah, it's really cool. It's very seventies. Oh yeah, he's got like Lovecraft looking stuff too, and his his mantra mm -hmm. looks, looks just like a Lovecraft creature. Well, he also kind of looks like if Jack Skellington had flesh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe like, that's still pretty, uh, some of it's pretty Burton-y, too. Maybe that's his secret cap. Like it. especially the more his so like the scratchier, awesome. his scratchier looking stuff is more. Uh, you know. No, his his mantra is like excellent. Here I'm gonna He's got like bat wings uh, and everything. Oh that's awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say. Look in uh look in the command center real quick. Post it to the boy. I probably already stumbled on it. Yeah, that's you've probably seen this one. But it's uh Oh that's awesome. Yep, that's the one yeah. I'm looking at. You get what I'm saying? What I mean, like it's Tim Burton-y. Yeah. It's yeah. all scratchy and it's all, you know, it's all yeah. elongated and stretched. Slender Man coming down. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I think that might be my favorite thing about this movie is just finding that artist because that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's and always also, cool how, like, something like this that, no offense, like, maybe not isn't worth so much time, can, like, yeah. um, turn you on to something else that's pretty cool, like this artist. Yeah, and also just let me, reminded me that fucking Lenny Neems can voice act, you know? Lenny Neems. <laughs> Lenny Neems, dude, my boy Lenny Neems. My, my good friend, Lenny Neems. Yeah, dude. Speaking words Let's of see. wisdom. Lenny Neems. Lenny Neems. <laughs> Lenny Neems. <laughs> Lenny yeah. Neems. But yeah, it's uh, because I enjoyed I enjoyed him very much. I enjoyed so, it. Yeah, he did. I, I'd say watch it every Halloween season if you can. Dude, it's if you like low budget, campy '90s. 
like TV movies, animated movies, um, especially if you like early '90s, like Hanna Barbera. Like this is this perfect. It's cheesy. It's kind of dark in places. A couple spoopy parts, but uh, yeah, I think it's you, pretty cool. Do you think this is one that you guys will add to your like every year? Busted out at Halloween kind of movie repertoire. Probably maybe, not, but maybe listen to once, the soundtrack. That's what I'll do. Once, once every like <laughs> the Dark couple Souls years. Soundtrack. Yeah, right. Once every couple years, when I remember it exists, then <laughs> probably. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. gonna be one of those. Yeah. I posted another picture of what I think that the style is like in the command center. Like it's, it's mm-hmm. similar to that. Oh yep. Mm-hmm. I've seen one hundred. Here, here's another one that's actually like dead it's on. That scratchy. Similar to that. Yeah. That style. It's the scratchy. Uh, oh yeah, scratchy pen work. You know. Mm-hmm. That looks like Montroud. Scratchy yeah. lines. I think he's supposed it to. also like, Count Warlock or something. Yeah, like Nosferatu. Yeah. Well, that was the Halloween cool. tree. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me let me ask yeah. you one more thing. How did you find this? If you had never seen it before, how did you kind of yeah, learn about this? Um, I think I saw it. Somebody was talking about it on a YouTube video I watched recently. And I was like, wait. What? What? And I had to like look it up. I'm like, okay, this is the movie. This is like uh, perfect. Yeah, it, I love it. It's so uh, so just, you know, Easy right on place, the right time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to have found it. Too. Serendipitous. Like, Serendipitous. Serendipituity. Yes. But yeah, that's it's the rare, rare, rare situation where it's a movie literally none of us have seen. Yeah. yeah. But it's great. It's like yeah, it could have been. It could have been terrible. You know what I mean? It had it had every every likelihood of being terrible. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. that? Why is there why is there KKK man on the <laughs> what on the deck? There? The it's... ghost? Oh God! Look at he's got like the pointy hood. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Nobody wants that. But I do like the uh, the intro and everything like sets the the tone of yeah. the show, and it shows the the awesome artwork zooming into the, yep. paint, the painted world here the oh yeah there's a couple of there's, <laughs> that was one of the the things where it's there's a couple times to get a little too close to the matte paintings yeah and i think the the sky was done in chalk it looked like it yeah because there's some there's some texture there that you can see they like some grainy it. something yeah a lot of it's done in chalk and maybe some in oil Maybe like pastel. Yeah, the pastel chalk stuff. Yeah. Pastels, whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, look at well, all this. Past- pastel is M N O P. Yes. <laughs> I I I can't say that I'm glad I watched this, but I'm also not offended. Yeah, well, yeah I was like, oh cool. This was a thing that existed. Yeah. I do enjoy the Nemo, though. You're correct. The Nemo Toad. Yeah, dude. Yeoman? Yeoman Dran... <laughs> Dran- <laughs> Yeoman Dranoel? Dranoel, dude? <laughs> Yeoman Dranoel. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. His, uh... <laughs> his, his duors... Duor... Snoom? Snoom? That sounds like Yeoman. Tolkien. Dwarf Yeoman, Dwarf. Yeoman Drainoel though is gonna be like my next D and D character. <laughs> Yeoman Drainoel, <laughs> I like it. That's yeah. really good. Well, anything Yeoman. else you guys want to end this video on? Um, uh, just watch the film. Give it a yeah a, a watch. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you're wearing your mound shroud. Be prepared to be yeah prepared. To wear your shroud of mountains. Prepare to learn about the history of Halloween, I guess. And, and yeah, just kind of, and and like, just be open to it, dude. I was open to the experience. <laughs> open your heart. And, you yeah. know, I was, I was like, oh, this, this looks like shitty, like gonna be a Scooby Doo, and then it actually 
had some cool looking animation. Just just it let it in. Cool colors. Get it in. It yeah. had some some surprisingly dark moments for a movie like this. Interesting, yeah. Uh, the concepts that they spooky you know. ass pumpkin talking. Yep, <laughs> facing death in the eye. Yeah, facing death. Like the do, do, like you guys go into this movie and somehow think that you're gonna end up at you face death and look it in the eye to overcome the fear is gonna be part of this movie. As I would say you're a liar. Because nobody expects that. Nope. From shit that looks like this. With the omen Draino L in it. Certainly not. No. Certainly not. Well, we'll end it there and hope you guys get a chance to watch this. And we'll be back with hopefully another movie that maybe we haven't seen. Maybe one of us has. Who knows? Maybe. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Happy, yeah, happy the Hollows. It's all Halloweens. Happy Halls and happy Oats to happy one and Happy Halls. This should be a holiday where you just take pictures of hallways mm-hmm. and munch on some Oscar Mayer wieners. Halls and weens, dude. <laughs> just halls and weens. When you're done, throw that hot dog down that hallway. Yep. That's yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the real. That's the, that's the true meaning of Halloween. Eat that's one the, in celebration, uh, throw one down the hallway. Yeah, it's the symbol. It's the ritual every Halloween you have to do to celebrate. Oh. You just take one just raw, cold ass fucking Oscar Mayer wiener mm-hmm. and just chuck it down your longest, straightest hallway. Just, yeah, find that hallway, prepare to throw, and just yell, this is for Mount Shroud. Yeah, this is for Mount Shroud. A really quick, dumb anecdote I saw on TikTok recently. Somebody put an Oscar Mario Wiener in one of those M&M's minis tubes and closed it. Yes, I saw that. It fits perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Someone pulled pulled a prank on somebody and had two M&M's tubes. One had M&M's in it. One had M and M's. Yep. He kind of terrifying. Faded. He turned into a robot. One turned into M and One had M and M's. <laughs> he doesn't even know no. what's happening. Gotta to come him. back, er- Halloween's not, th- not. It's not here yet. Okay, somebody stole him. His soul. Montrout stole his soul. Well, he's yeah, a he's now. now. <laughs> All right. Well, Bradshaw's lost forever. I'm not going on a Halloween adventure for him. No, I got things to do. He's screwed. If I was maybe uh, uh, seven or eight, maybe I'd go look for him. But no. Yeah, I would be primed for an adventure, but hey, bills to pay. Yep. Can't be venturing out for Bradshaw's soul every day, you know? Yeah, sorry Bradshaw just uh, pooped out there for a second. Um, but we'll end it there. Hopefully Bradshaw can... Uh, really padding this out to see if he comes back but all right but we'll just call it there hope you guys are have a awesome safe halloween and goodbye see ya stay spooky